spirit men take care of their wives. Greet your neighbor to the right and to the left. Mwabie karibu kwa ibada. Aya mwabie yomdine amesalimia na waweru. Yeah. I want to appreciate you, Bishop and Mama Bishop, for giving me this opportunity to come and minister. It's not a small thing. And I want to bless the Lord. Let's just, Bishop, you say you've been friends for a long time. Let's put together. Our Father and our God will come before you this morning. We thank you because you have gathered here for a reason. Because you said we are two or three gathered in your name, you shall be in the midst. Father, since we entered this sanctuary, we have felt your presence. And we pray, our Father, that for the next few minutes we're going to look at your word. It shall minister to us. We open up our hearts. We open up our spirit. Father, speak to us. We give you praise and we give you the honor. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, I would like us to look at the word of the Lord. I bring you greetings from our church, Wiki. I want us to look at the book of Joel, chapter 2, verses number 25. And for a few minutes, I want us to look at the word of God. We're going to look at two, three scriptures. And then we shall see how far we go. Number 25, the Bible says, So I will restore to you the ears the swimming rockers have eaten. I will restore to you what the crawling rockers have eaten. And I will restore to you back what the consuming rockers have eaten. I will restore to you what the chewing rockers have eaten. Number 26, the Bible says, you shall eat in plenty and you shall be satisfied. Amen. And you shall praise the name of the Lord, your God, who has dealt wondrously with you. And the Bible says, and my people shall not be put to shame again. Amen. In another version, it says, never again will my people be put to shame. Number 27, and you shall know that I am the Lord in the midst of Israel. I am the Lord your God. And there is no other. Again, the Bible repeats again. And my people shall not be put to shame. You notice that word is repeated twice, 26 and 27. So that you can get it very clear in your in your heart. Never again will my people be put to shame. I want to talk to you for a few minutes about this topic. You shall recover all. Amen. Tell your neighbor, you shall recover all. Amen. Please tell him with the passion. You shall recover all. That means there is something you have lost. And as I stand here this morning, every one of us, there is something you have lost. Some of you have lost money. Some of you have lost a reputation. There is something you have lost. Even as a church, if you look across, even the church in this nation, there is something we have lost. You look at the nation, there is something we have lost. If you look at your families, there is something you have lost. But this morning, the Lord wants to minister to every one of us. The Bible says, I will restore to you. 
I will repay back to you what the locusts have eaten. There are some locusts have eaten something in your life. Maybe some of you, the locusts have eaten your health. The locusts may have eaten your finances. But whatever the locusts have eaten in your life, whatever the locusts have eaten in the ministry, whatever the locusts have eaten in the church, whatever the locusts have eaten in this nation, the Lord says, I will restore. Amen. I will pay back. Amen. And you notice there, there are four kinds of locusts. The Bible says, the swarming locusts have eaten something in your life. The crawling locusts have eaten in your life. Consuming locusts have eaten in your life. And the chewing locusts have chewed part of your life. And the good news this morning to every one of us is that the Lord is restoring what the locusts have eaten. It doesn't matter what. The Bible says, I will restore what the locusts have eaten. And it says, you will have, you will have plenty to eat. Plenty. That means you may have gone hungry one time or another. But the Bible says, now this season, the Lord will have you to eat plenty. And you shall be satisfied you, you, until you are full. In other words, you shall eat and you shall have more than enough. Amen. In this life, I am praying that I shall have more than enough. Amen. If it is money, I want more than enough. Amen. Because when I have enough, it's for me and Grace and my children. If you come, I have nothing to give you. But I'm turning it around by the grace of God. I want to have more than enough. For myself, for the neighbor, for the stranger, and for the next generation. More than enough. That's what the Bible is saying. Whatever the locusts have eaten. And you need to visualize in your mind. And before we finish this service, you say, whatever the locusts have eaten, some of you may be your finances, some of you your opportunities, but whatever, the Bible says, I will restore what the locusts have eaten. And you shall eat in plenty until you are full more than enough. And then he says, never again will my people be put to shame. Amen. You may be here this morning, and maybe you have done something or you have gone a certain way and you have been put to shame. In this season, God is saying, never again will my people be put to shame. When you look at the, 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 the church in this nation, we are saying, never again, God is saying, the church be put to shame. And he continues and says, number 26, I am your God. So I am the one who is come, coming down to where you are to cause you to be restored, to cause you to be repaid. I am the Lord your God, and there is no other God. And it, again he says, never again, verses number 27, 26, <clears throat> never again will my people be put to shame. I was wondering, why is it that in chapter 26, the Lord is telling us one more time, you shall not be put to shame. Maybe there is something you did. Maybe there is a decision you made. Maybe there is a, 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 a way you walked. And somehow, somewhere, you were ashamed. This season and this moment, God is saying, you shall not be put to shame. In other words, the Lord is wiping your shame. And you need to release it. You need to release it. And sometimes when you do something and there is a shame in front of you, sometimes it's very difficult. Even when everybody has forgiven you, you find it very difficult to forgive yourself. You will never be put to shame again. Remember my theme this morning is that you 
shall recover all. Amen. There is something you have lost. There is something I have lost. And I want to look at a story here of some people that uh, lost and the Lord came down and caused them to recover what they had lost. I want us to look at the book of First Samuel chapter 18. That is the beginning of our, our story. It's about the life of David. <clears throat> David was actually coming to replace Saul. There was a time, there was a time in the history of Israel where we had two kings and all of them were consecrated. Because when Saul lost the way, God told Samuel, go to the house of Je uh, Jesse and anoint David. So at one time or another, there were two kings and both of them were anointed. That means one of them was replacing the other. That means you need to be very careful in this life. You can be replaced. You can be replaced. There is, there is a way you can go. There are some things you can do. And God can declare you in relevant. Amen. So we got to be very, very careful in this life. Whether you are a preacher, whether you are a leader, whatever the position you are, you can be depressed. There is, there is a way that Saul went. There are some decisions he made. There is a way he did things. And God said, your time is up. But although the time was up, he was still the king. But according to God, he was replaced. It is dangerous for you to be declared irrelevant. And you know, God has a habit of bypass. So you've got to be careful in this life. And whatever you are doing, I want to remind you this morning, you are not the first choice. Yes. There is someone who was given that assignment and he or she failed, then you came in. So you've got to be very careful. So pride aside, Marigo aside, you are not the first choice. You are not the first choice. There is someone who was given an assignment, the assignment you are doing today. And you've got to be sober. You've got to look at yourself and say, look, if I don't follow the Lord with the whole of my heart, in the singleness of my heart, I can be declared irrelevant. And it is a disaster when God declares you irrelevant. That means you could be a preacher, you could be a minister, and according to God, you are a past. But you are performing things like all things are okay. So the story begins in chapter 18, verses number 6. David is anointed the king to replace Saul. And then they went to war. And then when they came from the war, some people started singing. And this day, and this moment, for the sake of my security, I will not tell you, you who, who started the song. Because I must make sure I am secure. But when we went to war, some people started the song. And the song was very easy. They said, Saul has slain thousands. And they also said, David has slain tens of thousands. That was the song. There was, that song was sent by some people somewhere. Don't worry the people, but mighty the song. We got to be careful with the song we sing. And they sang, and the Bible says, in verses number, uh, number, number eight, Saul was very, very angry because of that song. There are some things you can do. There are some things you can say. And if you are not careful, they can cause somebody to be angry. That means you've got to be very careful what you say, 
Even when you have the victory, even when things are going well, you need to be very, very careful. Let me tell you this. If these people did not sing the song, the problems that David had, you would have been spared. Could it be you have taught some things and have brought trouble to someone? May the Lord help you. May the Lord speak to you. Because sometimes we speak a lot. And these people were singing, oh, Saul has killed uh, thousands. And then they would raise their voices. But David has killed tens and tens and tens of thousands. They didn't know that Saul was hearing. And the Bible says Saul was very, very angry. How can they attribute tens to me? Thousand to me. And tens of thousands to this man. And from that time the Bible says, Saul kept a close eye on David. I want to submit to you that we need to be very careful the things that we say. We've got to be very careful because sometimes we'll speak a lot. Even in the church, even in the nation, we speak a lot. Somebody was saying, if only the fish closed the mouth, it would not have been caught. You know, one way of catching a, a fish, for a fish to be caught, those who come from the lake regions, there is no way you can cut the fish with your hands. But the minute it opens its mouth, then it catches something, then it is caught. So somebody say, if only the fish closed its mouth, it should have been caught. You are here this morning, and sometimes you have talked too much, and you have been caught on the wrong side. So because of this song, and because Saul was very angry, then David had to free from, from Saul. And then you come to our story in, Psalms, in, in, uh, in, in chapter number 30. Remember, he has, he has freed from the, from the life of Saul because of that song. Because some people decided to talk too much. But he didn't know that he was being replaced by David. And then they come and they went to war. And the Bible says they, they had a lot of victory. And then number 30, chapter 30, the Bible says, And it happened that when David and his men came to Siklag, on the third day, the Amalekites had invaded the south, uh, south Siklag and attacked Siklag and burned it on, uh, with fire. That is um, Samuel uh, chapter 30, verses number 1. Now, these people were fighting. David had about 600 men, army men, and were fighting. And were skilled fighters. But they, when they were coming back, they were expecting when they come to Sikra, their, 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 their wives, their children would be there to welcome them. But they found that when they went to Sikra, their city was burned and their wives and their sons and daughters were taken captive. That was a very sad story. Three things, that, four things they found. And they are all there in that scripture. Zikla, their city was burned to ashes. Their wives were taken captives. Their sons and their daughters, they were taken captives. And their property were burnt. They have lost everything. And remember my message this morning is that you shall recover all. Whatever you have lost in your life, in your family, in your finances, in your ministry, the Lord is saying to every one of us this morning that you shall recover all. These people lost everything. They are setting their houses were burned. Their wives, even David's two wives were taken captive. They lost everything. Their sons and their daughters were carried captive. Their properties were carried, were, 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 they didn't have anything. There was no 
nobody to welcome them home. And we see how they reacted. And I want to ask you this morning, what do you do when you have a problem? What do you do when you have a challenge? We have to, we have to we look at two scenarios and then you check how you handle when you have a disaster. When you have a calamity in your life, there were two reactions. One of the reactions was by men. And remember there are 600 men. The Bible says the men cried until they didn't have the power to cry. That was one reaction. They were very grieved. They cried. And I want you to, to imagine you have 600 men, army officers, men, and they are crying. And imagine they cry until Sima Chosi Rikusha Nibuvu Yakuria Rikusha. That's a disaster. You know, we say the tears of men in dropping the stomach. They cried, the stomach was full of tears. The tears came out. They cried until they had no power to cry. What do you do when you are in challenges? Do you lock yourself and cry? These men were crying. They were very, very grieved. And then they looked at David and they said, we are going to stone this man. That's the reaction they had. This is the man. This is our leader. You are the reason I have lost my wife. You are the reason, you are the reason I don't have my son. But remember they are in the army. They were fighting together. But now they are blaming the leader. Many times when you are in a challenge, when you are in a difficulty, when you have a, a, a challenge ahead of us, instead of doing something positive, we blame the shift. Oh, it's my husband. Oh, it is my wife. Oh, it is my children. It is the nation. It is the pastor. It is the leader. These people, instead of seeing things positively, they were crying until they didn't have the power to cry. I want to submit to you. What do you do when you are in trouble? When you are in a challenge, do you blame other people? These men were blaming David. And I want you to imagine you are David. You are the leader of the team. And now we have a problem. Some of the enemies came and they attacked and carried everything. Instead of getting together, eh, like the way the, the team leaders were coming here together, and for this need we are together. We pray together. We work together. They were saying, no, it is you. You are the reason we have trouble in this church. You are the reason you have trouble in this other place. Men and women, let's not go that way. They were crying. They have no power to cry. And they are men. And that was a disaster. Imagine you are the leader. And then there is trouble. And everybody is now thinking of stoning him. We prayed about money protest. And you have seen in the televisions, people are carrying stones. But I can tell you they are not carrying stones to hit animals. They are carrying stones. You are the reason we are hungry. You are the reason we don't have a job. You are the reason you are we are not driving. Let us not go to the direction men and women. When we have a challenge, let us do what David did. And I'll show you for a, in a few minutes what David did. And that is what I want us, every one of us, in the church, in our homes, in our nation, we, instead of reacting, we act. But this man, this man, were very grieved. They cried and they cried. And they said, yeah, we are going to stone this man. You are the reason I don't have a... And remember even himself, his two wives were taken. So you are adding sorrow to sorrow. You are blaming. And sometimes even a church like this one, a situation like this one in your department, in your home, you take a decision together. And the one thing called elephant, everybody is against you. This is the cost of leadership. And it is difficult. So we have to lead knowing that 
looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Then we need to ask ourselves, when we are leaders, what will happen when men are against us? When men are blaming us, and yet we took the decision together. We, we sealed the deal together. We sealed the decision together. But when things are elephant, they turn to the leader and say, David must go. David must, be go, must go. Men and women, I want to submit to every one of you. Let us not go that direction. Let us see what David did. In verses number six, the Bible says, when David was saying these men were all crying, they had no power to cry, and now they are contemplating to stone him. The Bible says in number in verses number six, David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him, because of the soul of the people of us was grieved. And every man for his son, and every man for his daughters. There is a bat there. That's a turning point. That's my message this morning. Everybody is attacking you. Everybody is blaming you. Everybody is saying you are the reason we are in this trouble. They, are, they, they want to stone you. But look at the man of God. The Bible says, but David, tell your neighbor, but David. He encouraged himself in the Lord. Amen. The Bible says David uh, encouraged him in the, himself in the Lord. David strengthened himself in the Lord. David found his strength in the Lord. That the direction I want every one of us to follow this morning. As a people, as a church, as a department. Challenges will always come. And you know, leadership is nothing but making decisions. But when decision turns out, let us not carry stones. Can you imagine you are a pastor of a church like this one? And even the ladies in the hat bag, they have stones waiting for you to make a mistake. It's very difficult to, to, to lead a church like this one. Or at home, you are the father. And the children are looking at you from a remote con uh, angle. Make a mistake, Utaona. No, 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 no. I want to be in a home. I want to be in a church where even if I, am, I make a mistake, I am assured of their support and their love. They tell me, Daddy, we are here together. Pastor, we are here together. That is what I want. That's what I desire. So if you are in this church, for a reason or another, and you have stones. Please. <laughs> Waiting for a bad decision. Please, I beg you by the masters of God. We have a building site there. Throw it there. <laughs> and come light. And when there is a problem, you say, but David encouraged himself in the Lord. David found his strength in the Lord. There is no other place. There is a song we used to sing. Everywhere is sinking sun. But I'm standing on the rock, Jesus. So you call everybody. Don't, don't cry. Come here. In me there is safety. I am standing on the rock, Jesus. Amen. And you take responsibility. You take responsibility. You know, you cannot blame them. They can blame you. You can have stones. But, Jesus, but David... Encourage himself in the Lord. Men and women of this great church, that's where the Lord wants us to go. Challenges will come in our church, in, in, in our homes, in our businesses, in our, in our nation. But David, the Bible says, David encouraged himself in the Lord. David found his strength in the Lord. And he went before the Lord. And he said, and he asked two, two questions. Lord, after encouraging himself in the Lord, he had two questions. He asked, Lord, shall I pursue the enemy? He had two questions. He had nobody to blame. And that's the point I want to get every one of you, including myself. 
you become a solution. If there is a problem in any department, in any church, in our nation, in your home, you say, here I am. I am going to be the solution. We have enough problem, uh, people with problems. But we want men and women with solutions. David said, after encouraging himself in the Lord, he had two questions for the Lord. Lord, shall I pursue the enemy? And if I pursue them, shall I overtake? That is a man who knows his God. That's the position you need to have. Because there is a solution somewhere in God. And David, after encouraging himself in the Lord, he went, God, Jesus, shall I pursue the enemy? If God said, no, don't pursue, you will not pursue. Some of you have pursued the things and you have not sought the mind of God. David said, I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to go in the presence of God. And he said, God, this man, 600 of them, they want to stone me. I have also lost my wives and my children. But God, shall I pursue the enemy? And he, he, whatever God you say, he will do it. And God told him, and he said, if I pursue, shall I overtake them? Shall I recover? And the Bible says, God said to tell to him, Pursue. God told David, Pursue, and you shall surely recover, overtake them. He answered, He answered David, Pursue, and you shall surely overtake them. It's like saying, Very, very, I say, and then it is concluded. It is concluded. Very, very, I say unto you, David, pursue them, and you shall overtake them. And the Bible says, surely you shall recover all. That was the word of the Lord for David. Anytime you are in trouble, anytime you are in distress, what will save you is not carrying stones. What will save you it is not blaming this and the other. It is going before the Lord and ask the Lord, in this situation, what do you want me to do? And God is faithful. He will give you an answer. Amen. David went before the Lord and said, God, I know they want to, 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 to stone me, but remember, God, I have also lost my two wives. Some of these fellows have lost one wife. Me, I have lost two. <laughs> so my loss is bigger than all of them. Nevertheless, you are my God, you are my King. Amen. David knew his position in God. And he said, shall I pursue them? And if I pursue them, shall I overtake them? And God told him, David, I am on your side. Pursue them. You shall surely overtake them. And also another promise. You shall not only overtake them, but you shall recover all. And I'm telling everyone here in this meeting, by the power and the authority of the scriptures, whatever you have lost in your home, in your family, in your business, in the church, we shall recover all. We shall recover all. That's the message I have for everyone of you this morning. Whatever you have lost, we shall not blame anybody. We shall not look left. Some trust in the chariot, but for us, we shall remember the name of the Lord because the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in there and they are safe. If you run in there, every one of us, we shall be safe. I want to be like David, to be a solution. And he told the, the 600 men, let's go. God has said you shall pursue and you shall overtake and you shall recover. But 200 men were so weak, I mean they had cried double. They could not even wake up. You only got 400. I want you to take it back to number 18. Remember the word of the Lord. God said, pursue and you shall surely recover all, whatever you have lost. And that's what I'm telling everyone this morning, that whatever you have lost, you shall recover all. As a church, you shall recover all. Individually, you shall recover all, because that's the word of the Lord this morning. And number 18, the Bible says, And David recovered all the Amalekites had carried away. And David recovered his two wives. 
That is verse number 18. According to the word of the Lord. Number 18, the Bible says, And David recovered his two wives. And number 19, the Bible says, And nothing of theirs was lacking, either small or great, sons and daughters, spoil or anything which they had, what had they had taken away from them. David recovered all. That is the conclusion of that story. But he did not discover, he did not recover all because of the men who had no power to cry. The only reason he recovered everything is because he decided, I will not go the way of complainers. I will not go the way of those who shift the blame. They blame everybody else except them. For me, I will go the way of the Lord. I will encourage myself in the Lord. I will strengthen myself in the Lord. I will find my strength in the Lord, the creator of heaven and earth. And then I'm going to inquire of him, God, I have lost my two wives. I have lost my sons. I have lost my daughters. Shall I pursue them? Let me tell you, it is dangerous to do something and you have no basis of the authority. You've got to seek the face of the Lord. David said, I am going to pursue. I'm going to seek him. What are you saying? This is the problem. And as we are here this morning, how I pray that you shall present your problem before the Lord. I, hope, I wish your problem would be like a piece of paper. You spread it to the Lord. Lord, you see, this is it. My two wives are gone. My sons are gone. And this man, they want to kill me. What are you saying? He encouraged himself in the Lord. And God told him, David, pursue. And when you pursue, you shall overtake them. And when you overtake them, you shall recover. And in number 18, the Bible says, and David pursued them. And he recovered all. I'm telling everyone this morning, Whatever you have lost in your family, in your business, in your department, as a nation, the Lord is saying, we shall recover all. Amen. Let's close our eyes and pray together. As you close your eyes, maybe there is something you feel you have lost. David lost his two wives. He lost his sons and his son and his daughters. He lost his integrity. He almost lost the army. But he presented the situation before the Lord. I want you for a few minutes, for a minute or two, you present that thing that is appearing effort in your presence. I want you to present it before the Lord. And I want you to say, God, I am not doing anything until I hear your fresh instruction. What do you need me to do? What decision do I need to make? You stand like Moses and say, unless you give me an instruction, unless you assure me that you are going to go with me, I'm not moving from here. That is the vision that you have in your house, in your personal life, in your home, in your business, in your finances. Do like David. Don't blame people, but be like David. Present you before the Lord. And he'll give you an instruction. And whatever he tells you to do, be faithful. He told David, you shall pursue them. You shall overtake them. And surely, without fail, you shall Father, we thank you this morning. I pray for these men and women. There is something we have lost. Some of us have lost our joy. Some of us have lost our reputation. Some of us have even, may have lost even our names. Some of us we may have even lost our families. But whatever we have lost, we are presenting before the Lord. We come before you in the boldness 
and you're spreading the whole thing in your presence. And you're saying, this is it, Lord. Give us an instruction. And because you are the same yesterday, today, and forever, the way you answer David, you are going to answer every one of us. And you shall give us an instruction. We give you praise. And we give you the honor. Lord, cause every one of us to recover all. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name.